Hi, this is Patrick. I'll try to record lesson four. Uh, people have asked about the uh, latches in Metastock and referred me to Roy Larson using latches document. Uh, Roy Larson wrote this document. Here's his website. It's www.metastocktips.co.nz. Just to give him credit back. Um, I won't be using his document exactly step by step. I'll, I'll do it my own way. Maybe in a, an easier way, I hope for you, for you guys, so that you can quickly use uh, that in your formulas. Let me just uh, close this website and let's go into Metastock. All right, so uh, why do you why do you need latches? Usually, uh, you end up with a formula that gives you multiple cell signals consecutively or multiple uh, by signal consecutively that that you wouldn't want to see. Uh, let's open up an expert advisor and let's do something new. Let's call it latches test. And then we'll create two symbols. I'll make a new one called by and then we'll say C greater than moving average C comma ten comma E and I'll put a nice arrow at the bottom I'll make it green uh, the reason I'm, uh, I'm spending the time to create the expert is so that we can see graphically what the latches allow you to do and some of the limitation on the, the first version of the latches okay and then let's make a new one sell and we'll just use the opposite condition And I know that if we're moving average, we could just use the cross function, but some people don't like the cross function, and it's just easier for me to use a moving average so I don't have to type a long buy and sell formulas everywhere. And we'll put this one above and we'll make it red. Alright. And then let's just attach this expert on the chart. So if we zoom in the chart, you can see that right here I've got, I don't know, about 20 cell signals or enter short signals or whatever they are. And then I've got about 10 buys or enter long signals, etc., etc. So let's assume I only wanted one buy followed by one exit long or one enter short. And then followed by another buy, then followed by another uh, short signal or exit long signal. I would have to use latch. Usually what I do is I use uh, a little template. Let me write it out. Uh, let me click on Tools, Indicator Builder, click on New, and then let's call it uh, Testing or Latch, Latch 1, Latch 1. Alright, so usually what I write, and if you guys want to write that down, that's a little template here. I type in Buy, Open, uh, I'm sorry, Buy colon equal, then my Buy formula, or my you know enter long formula or my enter short formula or whatever then semicolon then cell uh, semicolon I'm sorry cell colon equal then my cell formula semicolon and then if I wasn't an expert and I wanted to see the buy signal I would type in buy and buy since ref oops ref of buy comma minus one greater than buy since ref of cell comma minus one and I'm sure you've seen you've seen me post uh, those kind of formulas all over the website so that would be the buy and then if I wanted to sell I would copy the same thing except I would just replace the buy signal by sell and I would replace the greater than sign by less than um, let me copy and paste Actually, I guess you guys can no, you guys can see it. Let me just copy and paste that into a WordPad document so that you can write it down. All right. So in here, I'll just type in the the original formula. So C greater than moving average of close comma ten comma e and then C less than moving average of the close comma ten comma e. And I usually just copy the original formula 
of the buy, copy that for the sale, and then just change the last line, of course. So I can just copy this. So what does this do? I first declare my buy formula. That can be any condition. It doesn't matter. It has to be a condition, though. Uh, then I type in myself formula. It's got to be a condition as well. And it doesn't have to buy, be buy and sell. It can be enter long and stop. It can be enter long and exit long. It can be enter long and enter short. It can be enter short and exit short. It doesn't really matter what the names are here. Don't don't spend too much time on that. And then I say I want the buy signal right here. I want the buy signal to be true. So it means I get a buy signal today. And then the number of bars since the previous buy signal is greater than the number of bars since the previous sell signal which means that the previous sell signal occurred before the previous buy signal so that I know I get a buy, a sell, a buy, a sell I hope that's simple enough um, and that should give you enough time to to write it down so that's usually the solution I use uh, it's very quick and easy but there's a problem with it the problem is you need to have a first buy and a first sell signal so that you can refer to them and calculate how many bars since the previous buy and sell signal which means that every time you use those formulas you're missing the first buy and the first sell signal now let's uh, let's take the time to to double check that let me cancel on this for now Say the changes, sure. We'll come back to this later. And then let's open up another chart. Actually, let's come here. Let's take a look and let's mark down our first sell signal. And let's mark down our first buy signal. Okay? And now let's, uh, let's apply the indicator. Uh, I'm just going to combine them. And I'm going to say if one... Uh, if buy one, if sell minus one. So let's just copy all this. And tools, indicator builder, edit. And then let's paste our formula here. Alright, because I'm combining them, um, I don't need to repeat the variables. So I can just delete this. and just keep my final two and then just uh, put an if statement around it if blah 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 comma one if the cell signal comma minus one and here I don't forget about the else so else comma zero oops zero then close parenthesis alright I missed something Oh, a comma. Okay, so I need a comma right here, and I need a close parenthesis right here. All right, let's apply this. All right, so it's giving me a sell signal right here, which is good, and then it doesn't give me a, a buy signal to right here, so that's correct. So I mean, if I if I look at those signals, they're correct, but look, I'm missing that first sell signal or enter short signal or exit signal whatever you want to call it and that first buy signal alright so the template you, you just wrote down if you did write it down uh, works fine it works with everything it's very easy to use uh, the only problem with it is that it doesn't pick up the first and second signal and I don't know if uh, many of you use the uh, performance explorations uh, or the, the performance system plugins. I believe that all the experts uh, explorations in, in that plugin are using that type of a, a latch, which means that all those system tests that you're running for performance system and performance explorations are always missing the first two trays. I don't know how much it affects the the results, but that is something that I thought you should know. So now let's take a look at uh, Roy's, Roy's document. Uh, I've actually learned something reading it. <laughs> I I don't really like the way it's presented, but it's actually uh, it offers you a solution to the the problem that I'm just highlighting right now. Uh, you know what? Let's just copy his whole formula and we'll study it at the same time. All right. So 
copy this and let's just work in a word document for a second here alright and let's paste this so Roy, Roy found a solution to the problem of missing the first two trades so what we're gonna do is work his formula around to match our template but make sure that we include those two trades in our indicator now alright so his first thing is n colon equal formula set signal I call that buy and then I put my buy signal or my entry long signal etc that's the same thing then he calls x is a sell signal or his exit signal so we can do this and then replace that by buy and sell now n used to be buy so I'll replace n by buy x used to be sell so I'll replace the word sell there uh, n used to be buy so I'll replace it there x used to be sell alright now that we've changed the, the formula a little bit so that it kinda matches what we were talking about and hopefully that makes it easier for you to understand what happened and you know how it relates to the uh, latches document that you can download uh, and you know that you've most likely read uh, let me just change this last line here to match the previous indicator the latch one indicator we created so that we can compare and actually see that it works so I'm gonna do if bar since I or buy list and bar since I or sell comma one for buy signal comma minus one for sell signal and again I'm saying buy and sell but please understand that you can use this for uh, many different things not just buy and sell alright so let's copy this let's go back into metastock and let's do an indicator so let's tools indicator builder let's do a new indicator let's do latch 2 and then let's paste the formula right there and click on OK and then let's apply it on the chart and here you can see the indicator plots a minus one on first signal stays flat and then plots a one on that signal now what you can do is um, scroll along and make sure that your latch works Um, I'm not gonna go any further on this. What we need to look at now is what what does that I function that we added do to the formula so that it, it fixes that problem so that you can understand how it works. Let's uh, let's delete what we had earlier. All right, so here is our I variable. Let's just copy it again. Oops. Control C. Okay, let's come down here. Let's just paste it. Okay, here's the accumulate function. So we're accumulating buy plus sell greater than minus one equal one. Uh, let's take this part first. Let's uh, copy this part out and let's take a look at that. Buy plus sell greater than minus one. Okay, our buy signal is a condition, right? That it either returns a value of one or zero. Our sell signal is the same thing. It returns either a value of 1 or 0. Now, when you say buy plus sell is greater than minus 1, you're actually saying, um, tell me when the first time buy plus sell was not null, where you first got a signal. When you've got both. Um, when you actually got both your buy and sell indicators running where you can actually compute any value so buy plus sell greater than minus one equals one comes back to saying uh, please tell me when both buy and sell condition or, or the indicator used in buy and sell is not null anymore because if buy is not let's say I don't have a buy signal the indicator is going to return zero 
if I don't have a cell signal either, the indicator is going to return zero. So it's going to say, okay, by zero plus cell zero, it's equal to zero. So it's greater than minus one. Now, why do you do that? Why don't you just use cum, uh, accumulate open parenthesis one? So let's <coughs> let's come down here because I can return the first bar of the chart and I can say, okay, I equals accumulate one, and that would be true all the time and uh, use the first bar as your starting point. The problem is you don't know if the indicators used in your buy and sell condition are uh, are already calculating properly. For example, a buy condition is using a 10 period moving average, so you know that it's going to take 10 periods before your indicator starts plotting properly, and so before you can actually get a real buy or sell signal. That buy plus sell greater than minus one takes care of that. It takes care to make sure to wait until both the buy and sell indicators are able to be properly calculated to say, okay, here's the beginning of a, a chart, or here's the beginning of a system. All right. Now, equal one means the first time it happened. Okay, B, buy plus sell greater than minus one is going to happen all the time. After the first period of uh, ten periods, and then whatever amount of time till the first signals. Uh, after that, this is always going to be greater than minus one. So what you really need to find out is the first time. So when you do accumulate that value, you're adding how many times this condition is true. So the first time it's true, it's equal to one. The second time it's true, it's equal to two. That's why we're saying, please tell me when this accumulation value is equal to one. And you know what, maybe we should take a look at it on the chart because I feel like I'm rambling and I'm not sure I'm making any sense. Um, let's copy this. Okay, control C. Uh, test. Control V. And then let's uh, do this. Buy plus sell greater than minus one. Delete. By the way, if you look uh, on the chart right here, you see I don't have any values for 10 periods because the moving average are not calculated. Okay? Now if I apply this, by plus 10 minus 1, as you can see it starts, um, I'm sorry, by, by plus cell uh, greater than minus 1. As you can see, it, it starts after 10 periods. And it's always true. So really what this is doing is really counting how many bars you you needed for the buy and sell conditions to be able to calculate. Now let's add the accumulate function. Let's just add the accumulate function without the condition. And you'll see that will just add up one for X amount of bars you've got on your chart. I mean it goes up to let's let's minimize this. Alright, so it goes up to forty and I'm sure if I scroll over there it's gonna go up to all the way to five hundred. Okay, so this condition is really not important. The only time it's important is you want to find out the first time it was true. And the first time it was true, it was equal to 1. That's why you add this condition in there. And you say, accumulate by plus cell greater than minus 1 equals 1. And that's going to return only that very first bar right here. All right. Um, I hope that explains some of the latches in the Rose documents. Um, I'm not going to go over the uh, ones using the previous function. Um, we might go into that a little later, especially um, when you come across uh, four four conditions: uh, enter long, uh, exit long, enter short, exit short. Actually, I think I do have uh, something similar on the on the forum. Uh, I might have to take a look at it, but uh, we've reached 20 minutes, so I'll stop right here. Thank you. Bye.